Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will record rental income in QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are on the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitar problem. We're going to be entering rental income. And to take a look at that, we're first going to look at the financial statements on the income statement or profit and loss. So we're going to scroll down here to the reports. Left side, we're going to go to the profit and loss section. And we're going to find, uh, we're going to have the dates to be the dates of 02. 0121, the month of February, 022821. So we're going to be running this report the, the year we're working is 2021, month of February, and run that report. So you'll note here that we have different formats of income. Now note that a lot of companies will only have one or two types of incomes because that's all they do. They do what they do, meaning if we sell stuff, that's probably our main part of income. We buy stuff and we sell stuff. And therefore, we would have all of our income grouped into the sales product, sales of product type of income. On the other hand, a lot of companies do a lot of service only. So if we were a bookkeeper or a lawyer or something like that, then we would just group all of our income into the service type of income. Uh, we're going to add another group. And then, of course, we have a lot more expenses because we pay for everything else that we do typically. So the expenses typically will be outweigh, we'll have more account types of expenses although we hope that the total of the expenses will be less than the total revenue that we generate so there's going to be more groups of expenses more types of expenses then there will be groups or types of revenue but typically we hope that the revenue in total will be larger we're going to add another revenue type here and that's going to be that the fact that we have the service revenue that's going to be mainly our guitar service and our maintenance kind of stuff uh, that we have in terms of the service here and we're also going to include rental income now. So we're going to say that we have rental equipment, maybe amps or something like that, our guitars, or we're going to set up um, something, a stage for someone or something like that, and rent out some of our equipment. So we're going to add another income type of area specific to the renting of our music equipment. A couple ways we could do that. Uh, if we want to add a new category here, then uh, we could go to our accounts we can go to my accounts over here and i'm sorry go to accounting over here on the left go to accounting and chart of accounts and add the new account here and note that that account needs to be an income type of account so if we scroll back down remember that this is typically in order by account type meaning assets liabilities equity income and expense and more specifically assets of cash then accounts receivable, then other current assets, then fixed assets, and then liabilities of accounts payable, and here are more liabilities down to equity, and then finally the income. So when we set this up, we want to make sure it's an income type of account that we are going to set up. We're actually going to do this as we bill the client, as we collect the sales receipt. We'll set up a new account, and we'll also do that by setting up a new item. So remember the inventory items are what are going to be on the sales receipt or invoice. So if we go up to the sales up top and we go to products and services, we're going to say that these are our items. They could be service items like our guitar lessons, or they could be actually inventory items like the ELP. We're going to have rental uh, equipment, uh, renting music equipment as our service item now which we could set up here as well as a new service item so that then it will pop up automatically or we can find it when we create a sales receipt or invoice to bill the client for the rental equipment that we're going to be uh, using. We're going to do that at the same point this time, however, and just create a sales receipt and create an account to record this to as well as the item uh, that we're going to record this with as we create the sales receipt. So the scenario is that we have somebody who is uh, renting our equipment and we're going to uh, collect the money at the same point in time as we provide the service and therefore create a sales receipt 
As we create the sales receipt, however, we're going to have to set up this new thing that we haven't done before. That's going to be renting the equipment, meaning we need a new account, income account to record the equipment rental, and we need a new service item. So we'll do that at the same time. We're going to say the plus item up top. Click this little plus. We've got customers on the left side. It's not going to be an invoice. We're going to say it's a sales receipt because we're getting paid at this point in time and we're really delivering the, the rental equipment at this point in time as well. So we're just going to put it into the sales, the sales receipt, even though they haven't quite used the rental equipment yet. But it's close enough in the point in time we're going to have that here. So then we're going to say that the if we select the drop down, it's going to be for music store stuff. So that's a reoccurring customer. So we're going to say music store stuff. If we tab through this, there's the billing. We're going to say that the date then is going to be the end of the month of February or 022821, February 28th, 2021. We don't really need an address here because it's not calculating the sales tax and sales tax uh, typically will will need an address in order to help that calculation. This is a service item and therefore shouldn't have any sales tax calculated for it. We're going to say that the type of payment is going to be cash and it's going to go into undeposited funds. Remember that when we have the sales receipt, that in essence is what it means. It's going to say that cash is going to go up in some way. Cash in this case, the way being undeposited funds, not the checking account because we're going to group it all together at the end of the month or the end of the day and then uh, group them in accordance with the group and we put into our system. And then we're going to have uh, the product or service. And this is where we're going to have the new product. We're going to type in here, rent music equipment. Now this is a new product or service. If we were to select the drop down, we're not going to see that product or service as, as if we if we select this drop down, we see all this other uh, stuff, meaning guitars and our uh, rental equipment and our other uh, sales type items, service items, uh, such as guitar lessons. But we, this is a new one. We don't have that there. So we're going to set it up now. We're going to set this up. And it's not going to be an inventory item. It's going to be a service type item. It's going to be the rental service. So we're not actually providing inventory and therefore don't have to deal with cost of goods sold or tracking that inventory. So that's nice. And we're going to say there's that. There's the name. We're going to just scroll through this. It's going to be sales information. I'll put the same thing. We're going to say that the price um, and the price may vary based on the type of, of um, rental equipment we have. And we might want to try to standardize that. We might want to say, hey, here's our package deal, which is what we're going to kind of say here. If you rent, you know, this equipment all in a, one group for one kind of show or whatever, then it'll be a package deal. Or we might want to go through and break it out and say, well, here's how much it is for uh, renting um, just, just this amp versus this guitar for so much time period and whatnot. So we can see how to go through this. We're just going to say it's uh, 4,500 here. We could also leave it blank and try to decide that as we create the sales receipt on a, on a step-by-step -step basis um, as, we, as we go from deal to deal, if the deals will, will vary from, from time to time based on, on uh, the type of negotiation we have. And then we're going to say uh, it's not going to be taxable. So I'm going to uncheck that. And that's going to be it. So we'll save and close this. And it'll populate for us. So there's the sales receipt. And there's one thing that I don't think we did quite correctly. And that is that I think it's going to the wrong sales uh, account. It's going to the, the sales account uh, that is for the sale of equipment. And we'd like to set up that new sales account. So I'm going to say this is, this is not quite right. I don't really want to record this yet. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I can't go back into it now. I can't go to that service item because I already saved it, but we could still edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this item here without saving it. And we're going to, I'm going to go back and re-input that information. We're going to go to the sales. We're going to go to products and services and see if that product has now appeared now. So we're in sales on the left, products and services. We're going to scroll down and we're looking for this item that we have set up, which is the rent of the music equipment. Here it is right there, rent of the music equipment. And what I want to know specifically is like, did I put that into the correct uh, sales account? So I'm going to click and edit this. And if we scroll back down, you'll see the income account it's going to is sales. What we really want to set up is a new account. We'd like to put it into the... Um, a new account called rent music equipment or something like that 
So something like this is what we would like uh, it to be. We're going to see if it lets us set that up. So I'm going to tab through this and see if it lets it set it up. And I'm going to say save. And it's saying it won't let me add that account. So we're not allowed here to add this account in the setup process. So what we're going to do then is add this account to the um, chart of accounts. And then we'll go back here and make this change. So I'm going to close this back out. We're going to go to the accounting on the left side. And what we're going to do is add a new account. We're going to select a new account up top. And we're going to call that account a uh, other. The category will be an income type of account. So it's not a bank account. It's going to be an income type of account. And we're going to say that uh, the detail type is going to be a service income type of account. And it's not going to be just service or income. We want to make it specific to break out this type of income, this type of service, which is going to be the rental of the music equipment. It's not going to have any subcategory. And then we're just going to save that item. So now if we scroll back down to our income accounts, scrolling down, we have the uh, rent music equipment, the sales, and the sales of product income, and then the, the service uh, fee income. So those are going to be the items we have. Now I'm going to go back and see if we can make that change to the item list because they wouldn't let us add this account uh, as we create the item. So we're going to go back to sales up top. We're going to go to the product list. And we're going to go back down and find this product that we set up, which was rent music equipment. So we're going to scroll back down, rent music equipment, and I'm going to edit that item and scroll back down. And it's got going to sales right now. And this is the income account. Now, it wouldn't let us change that before to make a new income account. But now that another income account is set up, we should hopefully be able to select that income account. So we've got uh, the sales, the sales of the shipping. And right above it, we have the rent music equipment. So now we're able to select that item. We're going to say rent music equipment, save and close that. And then we're going to go back to the creation of the sales receipt. So I'm going to select the plus item. We're going to go to the customers and we're going to create the sales receipt. And I'm just going to enter the same data we had before, get back to the same process. And we've just populated the same data. So music store stuff. Here's the date, 228. Cash is going to be the form of payment, undeposited funds already populated. And then we have, once again, rent music equipment. Same item here. We've just adjusted that now so that the item will record now to the proper income account. So if we click off of it, then it'll calculate this out. Note there's no sales tax here. So what's going to happen when we record this, then we are going to be saying it's a sales receipt. Therefore, we're getting some form of payment. We're getting cash. It's not going into the checking account, however. It's going into the undeposited funds. That will increase. Then the other side of it is going to be some type of revenue account. And that's what we changed. We changed it to the rent music equipment type revenue account. And that's driven by, of course, this service item. So that's kind of what the new thing was here. We created a service, a new service item that's going to a new income account. And this 4500 then will appear on the profit and loss in the new income account driven by the item here that we have set up. So let's uh, save this and go take a look at that. So we're going to save this. We're going to close this. Then we're going to go to the reports on the left side. And we're going to go to the balance sheet. We'll change the dates from 020121 to 0228821 and run that report. Scrolling down, then we're going to look for the undeposited fund. It didn't go into the checking account, even though we already got paid. We put it into undeposited funds. So here's the 4,500. If we select that item in undeposited funds and scroll down, there it is. Music store stuff, sales receipt. The other account, the split account, will be rent music equipment, an income statement account. We select that 4,500 then we see the sales receipt. Now let's take a look at the other side, the new account we set up. It's going to be exciting. We'll close that out. We're going to go to the reports on the left side. 
and we're going to select the profit and loss going into the profit and loss statement changing the dates to the month of february which is 0201212022821 so that's february 1st 2021 to february 28th 2021 and run that report so here is our report and now we have another income account so we've got three types of income the rent music the sales and the service fee now note you might be saying well the rent music might not be what we do most of the time and you might not like the order of these three accounts here you might say hey i'd, I'd rather have you know one of these other ones on top for whatever but uh note you can't really do that if it's within the same income account type because within here it is then ordered by by alphabetical order so it's first and ordered by the the format of the income statement which is income cost of goods sold then expenses and then within here it's in order by the uh, name of the account now we could change that by by assigning account numbers possibly but um, that can kind of complicate things so just be aware of that here's our new account though it's in the rent income and it's in the income section therefore increasing income and therefore increasing the net income as well if we select that rent music equipment then we see our sales receipt here if we select that sales receipt item the split go on the other side go into undeposited funds by the way and if we select that 4500 then we see our sales receipt hello in this presentation we will record rental income within quickbooks pro 2018 in so doing we will set up a new account for rental income if you've been working along with us we will continue with the get great guitars problem if not that is okay we will follow along we can still follow along we will be creating a create sales receipt for rental income that has been received at this time in so doing or in the process of doing this we will set up a new rental income account and a new item account for the rental income if you have the backup file up until this time you want to hit the drop down and go to restore the backup and that'll take you to this this point in time if not that's okay you can follow along if you do that'd be great because we'll have the same data if you've been following along with the problem you should have the same data as well we have the open windows tab open in order to open the open windows tab go to the view tab and open windows we also have the company homepage open which is at the company and home page that's where we are at at this time we're going to set up rental income so first i'm going to take a look at our income statement and see what we have so far and then figure out what's the best process for us to record the receipt of income for rental income for renting in our case music equipment for this time period for this month first let's take a look at the income statement or the profit and loss as it's called within quickbooks by going to reports company and financial we're going to look at the profit and loss standard changing the date range from 010121 to 123121 here is our income statement we have two types of income we have merchandising sales that's when we sell the actual merchandise mainly guitars we have the service items that's going to be our service items our maintenance items and currently uh, lessons in terms of guitar lessons now we have rental income in terms of music equipment renting out music equipment we could put that into the same service area it's not merchandising income or we could set up another account called something like rental income if it's going to be part of our business often then we want to put it up top in terms of rental income up in this line item if it was something that we're only going to do from time to time then we would have it down here in terms of rental income that we just so happen from time to time we're going to be in the business hopefully of renting some of our equipment out so we're going to include that up top in the rental income as another income uh, account now when we add the income account we could do that by going to lists and we're not going to do it this way but just to show we're going to go to lists and chart of accounts this is our chart of accounts we could add the new account by going to accounts at the bottom and add new that's one way we can set this up and when we set it up we would then set it up as a revenue type account or an income type account here and we could do that but we can also set it up as we go through 
the process of uh, recording our transaction. So that's the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to close this out back to our income statement. When we set this up, we're also going to have to set up the sales receipt and use an item in order to set up the sales receipt, meaning we have a new uh, revenue item and that's going to have to be set up within or it could be set up within the items list and that would be here that item being rental uh, rental income of some kind if we were to go to the lists then we could go to the item lists and that would give us usually these are our service items here so here's our service items we're gonna have to add a new service item something like the rental income on on the service item in this section again we're gonna do that as we go as we put in the data so I'm going to close this back out. We're going to go back to the home tab and we're going to enter a create sales receipt for rental income for renting music equipment. We're going to go through our data here. First, we got the customer and it came from music store stuff is who we rented to. So music store stuff. And I'm going to type that in current customer. So it's going to pull up automatically tabbing through this. We're going to keep that template. We're going to say that we got paid already with a check. So we'll keep the check. We're going to put it in there as of uh, the end of the month, 228. Sales number will be the six again. The sold to should populate on its own. Check 6472. Not our check number. That's the check that we received from music store stuff. Then we're going to need a new item. So we're going to have to put in an item here. This is either the service items here or inventory items that we are selling. In this case, we have a new service item that we are selling. So we're going to type in, I'm going to call it an inventory account. We're going to call it rent on music equipment. Rent music equipment. We're going to say tab and it's going to say QuickBooks did not find this equipment in your list. So do you want to set it up? Yes, we do. We want to set that up. And we're going to have it be called a service item. We're not selling the equipment this time. We're just renting it out. So we're going to say it's a service item. We're going to say the item number is here. Subscription or uh, description is going to be the same. It's going to be rent music equipment. Now the rate is going to vary depending on the music equipment we have. We could try to piece it out in terms of how much music equipment or what music we equipment we are going to rent. I'm going to put it in there at the current price. We're going to charge 4,500. That's something that we are is going to it's going to populate at 4,500. It could vary depending on the contract that we uh, set up for different music equipment rentals. We in practice we might want to piece out the music equipment and to have each piece of music equipment be uh, rented at a different set or have package bundles saying if you if you rent this package deal for a weekend then this is how much it costs for that package uh, of rental package so we're going to put it in there by 4500 we're going to say that that's we're renting this music equipment for a weekend or something like that and it's going to have taxes we're going to have non-taxable it's going to be a non-taxable item the account that it's going to go to once again an income statement account usually and we could put it into services but we're going to make a new one and we're going to call it the same rent music equipment so we've set up a new item and a new revenue account as doing this or we're going to set up a new account as doing this once we select tab it's going to say set up we do want to set it up so this is going to be the account we're going to we're going to set up as the default account when we enter the inventory item of rental uh, equipment when we rent music equipment we're going to keep the name there description uh, is going to be the same note that it defaults of course as an income account already because we're entering it in as a, on the on the sales receipt which uh, would be make sense to be an income account we're not going to populate any of the rest of the items here and save and close and there will be our item so if we so note what we have done here we've set up a new service item called uh, rent music equipment that's going to be the driving thing that that's going to cost out when we make an invoice or a sales receipt as we have done here and we've created a new account called rent music equipment an income statement account which will appear on the income statement as a separate service line item 
So we're going to say, okay, there is that. If we make this a bit larger, there's our, there's our item. There's our description, the same in this case, no tax. Quantity, we're just going to say is one. So we have the 4,500, no uh, sales tax. That means 4,500 total. Nothing in terms of uh, inventory is being sold. And therefore, the journal entry as we create this will just be an increase to the revenue and an increase to uh, the undeposited funds because we have not yet taken the funds to the bank. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the print later item here. We're not going to print this item. And then we'll just say save and close. Take a look at the income statement and the balance sheet and see if it has done what we believe it should do. So we're going to say save and close. If we then go, to, I'm going to first go to the balance sheet, go into reports, scrolling down company and financial, scrolling down to the balance sheet standard, changing the date range up top, customize report. Date range is going to be from 010121, January 1st, 2021 to 123121, December 31st, 2021. Okay. There we have our information. Now it didn't go into cash, even though we got a check. It's going into undeposited funds right there. There's our undeposited funds. Double clicking on that item, scrolling down. There it is. There's the 4,500. Double clicking on that. We then see our sales receipt. If we close this back up, close this back up, go to our profit and loss, which is going to refresh automatically since last time we had it open in the open items window. We now see a new income statement account. So we had merchandise income or sales before we had a uh, service before. Now we have rent music equipment. Note that within the income section, as we add a new account, it's going to be in alphabetical order. So it's not, it's, it's in order first by type of account income before cost of goods sold. It's in order second by the order of the accounts because we didn't assign any account numbers to, to specify the order uh, in any other way than that. So note that within the account type, it'll be ordered by alphabetical order by default, unless we have some other ordering system such as account numbers. And there's going to be our rent music equipment income account. If we double click on that, there is our rental. If we double click on that, there is our sales receipt. Closing this back out, closing this back out. That is what we have so far in terms of recording the rental income and adding the new account for rental income as well as the new item.